All right, in section uh, 2.2 through 2.3, uh, we're going to start learning about the derivative. Uh, so where we left off was talking about the tangent line and how we use the limit process to get from the slope of the secant lines um, as we get closer and closer to a certain value that we're looking for, the slope at that value, uh, the limit process gets us there and it eventually converges to the slope of the tangent line. As it turns out, that slope of the tangent line has a name, we call it the derivative of a function at that point. So the derivative of a function um, f at a point x, f of x, is the instantaneous rate of change that we had talked about in the previous lecture. Um, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at a point x, f of x. And the derivative, derivative is the slope of the tangent line of a curve f of x at the point um, x f of x. <coughs> Those basically say the same thing. So here's a picture of it. <coughs> we have um, a curve, so this greenish bluish curve here. And we're looking at the point um, x right here. And if we drew a tangent line there, the slope of that tangent line is the derivative. So this f prime of x is the notation for the derivative of f at x. So that f, it looks like kind of an apostrophe. Um, we pronounce that as f prime of x. <coughs> so it's just a new notation for us to, to get used to. So the derivative of y equals f of x with respect to x is written as f prime of x. Or we can also call it y prime, or dy dx, or df dx. The fractional notation, the dy dx, um, that's called Leibniz notation. Because Leibniz was one of the um, founders of calculus. It was between um, a big controversy between him and Newton on who discovered calculus first. Um, they both really found it around the same time and they had different approaches, but it was a really big deal um, back in that time. And they had different, uh, sort of different teams, uh, Team Leibniz, Team Newton, and uh, anyway. Today we just say that uh, they both probably discovered it around the same time <clears throat> and it just so happened that way but they were accusing each other of stealing each other's work anyway um, the reason why Leibniz notation looks is a fraction is because the derivative is a slope uh, and slopes oftentimes are written in fraction form so that they make more sense to us and um, that delta y, delta x, um, that means change in y over change in x. That's what it looks like in Roman letters instead of Greek letters. Um, but we probably won't be using that notation. We will, however, be using the dy dx um, in the d dx. So the d dx is just saying, okay, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of some function, and then some function will be listed there. I don't often use the df dx notation. So to find a derivative, of course it's going to involve a limit because the limit process is what takes us from the slope of a secant to the slope of the tangent, which is the derivative. So the limit as h approaches, um, oh, there's a mistake there, h approaches zero. Make sure you change that in your note. That makes a big difference. Um, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of h all over h. So this um, notation hopefully looks familiar to you. Um, at least this part here. This is called the difference quotient. And um, really it's just the slope written in a different form. Uh, usually when we write the slope formula, we do f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. And this is really the same thing, except instead of saying, ha instead of having two different points, we just say, okay, well, we have one point and we have 
um, the in there and then a second point but the distance between them is H so it's X and then the point next to it is X plus H and the difference between them is H so instead of having X2 minus X1 which is the difference between the point two points we just call that H to simplify things really um, so the, the derivative is going to be as this h gets closer to zero. So again, remember that. Um, let me just really cross that out because that's a big deal. Remember, we want the limit as h approaches zero. All right. So h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning the second point, this x plus h, is getting closer and closer to x, and hence we get the um, derivative or the slope of the tangent line. <coughs> so the derivative can be approximated by looking at an average rate of change or the slope of a secant line over a very tiny interval. The tinier the interval, the closer this is to the true instantaneous rate of change, slope of the tangent line or slope of the curve. All right, so we're going to use that formal definition of a derivative to find the derivative of each function. We will be learning new methods and probably easier methods on the next page, but we're responsible for knowing this method as well. So we're looking for f of or f prime of x, um, and we're going to be using the limit definition. So it's the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, let's go ahead. I, I know what f of x is. That's the given function. Let's go ahead and find what f of x plus h is. So I plug our x plus h in and I get 3 times x plus h minus 7. And that's just 3x plus 3h minus 7. And now if I plug that in, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x plus 3h minus 7. We're going to subtract f of x. So that's going to be minus 3x and plus 7. Because when you subtract, you have to distribute to both terms. All over h. Alright, and you'll notice that the 3x is, the 3x and the minus 3x cancel. And we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 3h, oh, the 7's also cancel, so we just get 3h over h. Well, the h's divide out, and you just have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3, and the limit of a constant is just that constant, so the limit of 3, or the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 is just 3, which is also the derivative of the function. Now you'll notice that the derivative of the function is the same as its slope. And that is not a coincidence. That's because this is a straight line with a slope of 3. So the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change at any point on this line is always going to be 3 because it's a straight line. All right, let's look at a more complicated one. So we have this quadratic. And again, uh, I think it's helpful to go ahead and start off doing f of x plus h. In the last lecture, I said it's a good idea to memorize what x plus h squared is, and now you see why. So we get um, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x and plus 3h. Alright, so let's uh, find the derivative, which is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h, or f of x plus h. So that's all of this that we just found. Minus f of x. Now remember when you subtract, you got to change everybody's sign. Alright, and then you're always going to have, so 
some terms canceling out so that you're left with terms that only have an H in them and that's good because you want to get rid of that H in the denominator just like when we are factoring um, and simplifying to, in order to find the derivative it's it's you know sort of the same idea except we're not forcing it to happen it just happens um, so I can divide everything by H and get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h plus 3. And if I plug 0 in for h, I get 2x plus 3. So that is the derivative of x squared plus 3x. Alright, now we're going to look at some rules here that you'll probably like a lot, a whole lot better than using the definition. And you need to memorize these. Um, so the constant multiple rule, if you have a constant times a function, then the derivative is just going to keep that constant but take the derivative of the function. The sum or difference rule just says that if you have um, two functions added together, the derivatives are just the derivatives added together and likewise with, with subtraction. So um, this rule right here is, is, I mean, you're gonna know that rule, but it's not something that you need to uh, worry about so much. Now the power rule is one that we use um, constantly, and that's saying if you've got a power, uh, the power comes down in front, and then you subtract one from it. And that's how you find the derivative of anything in the form x to the n. The derivative of a constant is zero because if you have a constant, now remember what the graph of a constant would look like. It would just be a horizontal line. There's no rate of change, so there's also no instantaneous rate of change. Um, so the derivative of constants is zero. And the derivative of plain old x is equal to one. So if you think about the graph of y equals x, the slope of that line is always 1, hence rate of instantaneous rate of change anywhere on that line is going to be 1. Alright, so that's a, that's a big one there, your power rule. You'll be using that a lot. Alright, and then exponentials. Now, uh, e is my favorite number, and here's another reason why. The derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. It's the only function where its derivative is itself. Um, the derivative of a power um, or a base to a, well, it's an exponential function. So a to the x is ln of a times a to the x. And um, our last special case is the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So these are your three special cases that you don't treat like any other function. So just because they have powers, we're not going to treat them like these powers, where you take it down in front and subtract 1. Alright, so let's um, use these rules. So d dx, it means take the derivative of 5. Well, 5 is a constant, so that derivative is 0. d dx of x squared, it's a power, so we're going to bring the power down in front. That's a 2. Keep the x, and then subtract 1, we get 1. So it's equal 2x to the 1, or just 2x. Here's using that sum rule that I told you about, but really, you know, you're just, it's sort of like distributing. You're going to take the derivative of both. For x cubed, you bring the 3 down in front, subtract 1, and you get 3x squared. And 2x is just going to be 2, because your power on x is already, is, is 1, and if you subtract 1 from it, you get 0, and x to the 0 is 1. The derivative of 2e to the x is just 2e to the x. That's one of those special cases. ln is another special case. Um, so the, LN, the derivative of ln of the x is just 1 over x. But because there's that 2 out in front, we need to multiply it by 2. All right, now this is the kind of problem that I will ask you to make it derivative friendly. And to make it derivative friendly, you're going to change it so it has an exponent instead of a radical. So the cube root of x is the same as x to the third power. Now I can use the power rule and get one third x 
And then the one, one third minus one is negative two thirds. And that negative exponent is just fine. You don't have to change that. All right, again, we want to take the derivative of each part here. So that's gonna be three times five, because if there's a number already there, you multiply it, it's 15 x squared plus three and then minus zero because the derivative of negative 14 is zero. This is another one to make derivative friendly, so it's gonna be d dt of t to the negative ninth power. So it's gonna be negative nine t to the negative 10 power. Remember you're subtracting one, so it's gonna become more negative. All right, here uh, I wanna make all of these derivative friendly, so it's gonna be p to the negative two, plus p to the two-fifths minus four e to the p. All right, so I'm gonna take the derivative of. So it's gonna be negative two p to the negative three plus two-fifths p to the negative three-fifths minus four e to the p. So another thing you can be asked to do is to find an equation of a tangent line. So if by finding the derivative um, at a point you get the slope, but what about the rest of the equation of it? Well first we're going to take the derivative and we're going to plug in the x value that we're given and that's the slope of the tangent line and then we're going to use that point in the slope to find the equation of a line using y equals mx plus b. So f prime is equal to 4x minus 6. f prime of negative 4, because we were given negative 4 as our x value, is 4 times negative 4 minus 6, negative 16 minus 6, so that's equal to negative 22. Now if I plug in uh, those values, I have uh, my y is 5, so it's going to be 5, and let me start over there. 5 is equal to, uh, the slope is negative 22, um, times x, which is negative 4, plus b. So that's going to be positive 88 subtracted from 5, so b is going to be a negative 83. So all together it's going to be y equals negative 22x minus 83. Equation of that tangent line. Or maybe I can squeeze it in down here. All right, and the second one, the derivative is going to be four, and that's going to be minus seventy to the x. And if I plug zero in get 4 minus 7 e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so 4 minus 7 is negative 3. All right, so using that slope and the point that we're given, we can find the equation of this tangent line. Um, so we're going to have 0 is equal to negative 3 times 0 plus b, Well, b must be 0. So we get y equals negative 3x plus 0. Alright, so um, what we've found here, the equation of the tangent line. So if we have some kind of curve, um, I'll just make something up, and we want the equation of the tangent line right here, so I'll draw the tangent line. The derivative is giving me the slope right at that point, and then you have a point, so x and y, 
and you use those to find the equation of that tangent line. So that's what we found in those last two examples. That's it for now.